Well, hello, and today we're going to run through some key figures in NIAC Heritage. Um, we're going to do this fairly quickly, but uh, just take a look at some of the people that had some impact on the development of NIAC, and uh, both in terms of those that were involved in administration and teaching and those who went through NIAC and were students. All right, so let's take a look at that. Of course, uh, A.B. Simpson was the founder and started the school. When Simpson died in 1919, Paul Rader became the president of uh, the Missionary Training Institute. And for two of those five years, he also served as president of the CMA. Um, he didn't particularly like serving in that role. And later, uh, after two years, uh, he decided that he wanted to step down from president of the CMA. So, but he continued on as president of, uh, of missionary, the Missionary Training Institute. After him, Dr. Seneff is often called the forgotten president because he served less than two years before his death. Um, he died rather suddenly in an accident. He too served as the president of the school and of the CMA. He was a man known for his great faith and zeal for missions. So uh, there are some of the early leaders of uh, Nyack uh, College. Dr. Schumann was the last one that served as president of both the Missionary Training Institute and the CMA. Uh, he was known as a man of humility and of vision. He led Nyack through the difficult Depression era. So you can imagine if you've studied the Depression, uh, the challenges of that financially. Uh, he had begun a career in 1898 as a school teacher. Later, he worked for the Atlantic Refining Company, and then he left uh, a good-paying job in the wealth to become a pastor, district superintendent, and a professor. Um, as you know, the Rockland campus uh, has Schumann Hall up there on the top of the hill. Um, it was one of God's generous gifts in Nyack College, estimated to be worth one and a quarter million dollars in 1954 it was purchased by the college for only $75,000. The MTI offered three-year courses in missions, Bible, and pastoral ministry in Christian ed in those days. After him, Dr. Mosley was a 1915 graduate of MTI, served as a missionary for 25 years in China. Um, he also was the first president of MP MTI to be elected. In other words, instead of being appointed, he was elected as president of uh, Missionary Training Institute. And during Mosley's time, Nyack began offering uh, some further degrees in theology, religious education, and music. And in 1956, the school's name changed to Nyack Missionary College. Dr. Boone was a 1931 graduate of Missionary Training Institute. He served as its president for 17 years. On the Rockland campus, we have the Boone Center there, um, where the cafeteria is and a lot of other uh, offices um, named after him. In 1960, the graduate program, which we call ATS today, was called the Jaffrey School of Missions, and that was begun. In 1972, the college was renamed Nyack College. So, uh, as we know, it is the name that currently is there. Dr. Tom Bailey was a 1939 graduate of Missionary Training Institute and served as the president of the college for seven years. In 1977, he negotiated a three-year seminary program and the graduate school was renamed Alliance Theological Seminary and now offered a Master of Divinity degree. Uh, of course, we have on Rockland campus, the Bailey Library, named after that, uh, this man. Dr. Rambo was a 1957 graduate of NIAC and served for five years as its president. In 1984, there was a Korean extension site that was established. It, uh, hasn't continued, but it was uh, there for a while. Rambo later served as the CMA president. Uh, and uh, after him, we are followed by Dr. Boda, who graduated from Nyack in 1958 
and also served as its president for nearly five years. In 1989, the college added the adult degree completion program and the BS in organizational management. In 1968, Dr. David Schroeder was named the president of NIAC Missionary College and served as president for 12 years. And it was during that time that the Manhattan Extension was established and several new programs were added and NIAC purchased several more buildings, including Sky Island. Uh, that building hasn't been used in the last couple of years, but uh, it's located over there above Bowman Gym. And Dr. Michael Scales is our current president. In 2010, he added uh, the new nursing program and also the new location in Lower Manhattan. Nyack College uh, continues to offer uh, degrees and uh, also has a doctoral program at ATS. So some of the educators and administrators that uh, served at Nyack, uh, let's run through a few of those. Miss Waterbury was one of Simpson's first students and later stayed on as an instructor. Uh, she was best known for her courses in Bible doctrine and church history. Uh, so uh, we can see that early on in Simpson's career, he, uh, he involved women in ministry, even in teaching, as we look at uh, the fact that she taught Bible doctrine and church history. George Partington, for whom the building was named uh, overcame incredible obstacles in his personal life. If you can imagine this, at age 10, he was yanked from his seat so roughly by his teacher that his spine was twisted. And unable to lower his dislocated arm for three years, he became almost totally disabled. Later, in answer to prayer, he was partially healed, but spent the rest of his life bent over at the waist. So if you can imagine teaching... Uh, in that manner and how difficult that would be, but also just humiliating to be uh, bent over at the waist and, and lecturing in that way. Um, he taught at, uh, at, at NIAC and until his death, but students carried him upstairs to his classroom. Can you imagine that? And his classes in biblical and theological studies were demanding and yet popular. Everyone enjoyed him. He was intensely a live man who could convulse his students with hilarious laughter. So lessons to learn, even when things are as challenging, as difficult as he faced, to be able to have a sense of humor and to make the best of it is not a bad example. Sarah Lindenberger uh, was the leader of the healing home that we talked about a couple weeks ago the Baraka home. Uh, it was first located in New York City, but then relocated near the campus. Uh, thousands of people came to Baraka for rest and healing. And uh, back when it was located near the campus there in Nyack, students lived at the home and ministered to guests uh, along the way. So she was uh, very influential in a lot of the students' lives. She authored several books on divine health and traveled the country teaching on the subject with Dr. and Mrs. Simpson. So again, another example of Simpson's uh, involving women in ministry along the way. Here's a picture of the graduating class of the Missionary Training Institute uh, in the year 1894 to 95. So you can see a, a good mix of uh, of people there. And, uh, these are some of the, this is a picture of a lecture in Partington Hall back in the day where we currently hold chapel on the Rockland campus. So you can see uh, how it was laid out in that day. And then some of the notable alumni, let's take a look at them. William Christie and his wife, Jesse, were both born in Scotland, became involved at the New York Gospel Tabernacle shortly after coming to the U.S. Both attended the New York Missionary Training Institute and went to China. Uh, during Dr. Christie's 58 years of missionary service beginning in Tibet, 
he endured incredible hardships, including being beaten and stoned. So a little bit like the Apostle Paul, if you can imagine. Uh, his courageous exploits made him something of a hero, and missionary colleagues characterized him as the Livingston of Northeast Tibet. He was loved by the Chinese for his generous spirit and um, was devoted to understanding their culture and the things that uh, could be learned from their culture. Uh, he was protected during the Boxer Rebellion and, uh, and the Chinese people hid him so that he would not be killed during that time. He uh, held several uh, leadership posts after serving in China, including treasurer of the Alliance for 17 years and vice president for 16 years. So certainly a man with uh, incredible stamina. And we have uh, Christy Hall there at Naya College, which is named after he and his wife. Robert Jaffrey. As a young man, Jaffrey sensed that he was being called to become a missionary. And after meeting A.B. Simpson, he decided that his calling was to serve as a missionary to China. His father uh, owned the Toronto Globe, which was a newspaper in Canada, and really was not happy with R.A. Jaffrey's choice and uh, threatened not to pay for his expenses to travel to China, although he would be willing to pay for the return trip if Jaffrey decided that he wanted to return and not continue in missions. He served in Asia for 35 years, and all that in spite of a heart condition and diabetes. Um, Jaffrey started the work in Vietnam and Indonesia as well, and in 1942, when Japan invaded the island where he was stationed with his wife, Minnie, and his daughter, uh, he died in concentration camp uh, or a prisoner of war camp, if you would, uh, during that time. He remained captive until his death. So, significant man with a man of vision, man of uh, real uh, stamina in spite of his health issues. Mabel Francis graduated from Nyack Missionary Tra Training Institute in 1909, went to the mission field in Japan during the war, uh, when all of the other missionaries came home, she requested not to leave and continued uh, there. And in 1962, the Emperor of Japan conferred upon Mabel the highest civilian honor. So a woman who left her mark by standing out and in the most difficult of times decided she would not leave when she had the opportunity to, but would continue working and serving the Japanese people. Miss Carrie Merriweather went to Sierra Leone and um, she became ill during her second term and returned to the U.S. and despite her frail health, she promoted mission work in Africa and encouraged many people in their faith. So a graduate of, of NIAC, but uh, not able to stay long-term in Africa, but continued to have her influence in encouraging the missionary endeavor in the Alliance. Betty Knopp, and you know the, uh, the building that's named after her there at uh, the Rockland campus. She served as a missionary to Columbia. Her husband, John, passed away during their first term, and she stayed on for 25 years and then came and served at the national office of the CNMA for nearly 30 years. She then retired to work at Nyack College as the Director of Church Relations and was the first person uh, most visitors would meet from her desk in the Schumann Hall lobby. She uh, penned almost 400 notes a year to alumni and friends of the college. So wrote them out by hand back in the day before computers. Betty Knopp. Betty Olson, there were the coffee shop is at Nyack College and the business offices uh, named after this woman. Betty Olson was a missionary to Vietnam and uh, she was taken captive while uh, attempting to save a wounded co-worker. Uh, she was forced to march for 12 to 14 hours a day for three months through the jungles and through successive prison camps they were often put in cages, given only maniac root to drink, 
of the three survivors, only one uh, of the three prisoners, only one survived. He later described the excruciating ordeals of their captivity at uh, that link there. And uh, he says that she never showed any bitterness or resentment. To the end, she loved the ones who mistreated her. And she would often uh, share what food she had with the other two prisoners to give them more uh, nutrition because she wanted to protect them and save their lives. Admiral Timothy Zemer, he graduated in 1965. He served a decorated career in the Navy during which he was commander of the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, during his service, Admiral Zemer served as executive director of, following his service, he served as executive director of World Relief, which uh, provides disaster response, community development, different things uh, in countries all over the world. In 2006, he was appointed by President George Bush to lead the president's malaria initiative to combat and control malaria in Africa. Frank Delane in 1977 graduated from NIAC. He was the president and co-founder of the Telemark Incorporated, one of the nation's premier construction services company. Uh, he formed Hampton's Green Alliance, a nonprofit association of building industry professionals who promote green building technologies. Uh, he is an award-winning advocate for sustainable building and an educator for the green building industry. John Mwangi uh, graduated in 1978. Um, in 2006, he was named as alumnus of the year for outstanding service to society and to the kingdom. He overcame growing up in poverty in Kenya and became president of Child Care International for both Kenya and Uganda, where he was responsible for over 4,000 orphans. Uh, John has raised funds from around the world to support these very needy street children by feeding, clothing, housing, educating, and sharing God's love with them. He even started a business school complete with a computer lab. God has laid on his heart a burden to break the cycle of poverty on the lives of these children by equipping them with the skills nece necessary to succeed. Cheryl Fennessy graduated in 1980. And in uh, October 8th, on October 8th, 2010, the Cheryl Fennessy School of Nursing was dedicated on the Rockland County campus. Uh, after embarking on her career as a registered nurse in the U.S., Cheryl and her husband, Daryl, moved to the Middle East to continue their lives of service, where, and they have just recently retired. But they served in many countries in the Middle East, as well as most recently uh, serving refugees, Arab refugees in Germany. She founded Sidon Alliance Prenatal Clinic in Sidon, Lebanon, which led to her being recognized by the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities during the organization's 2003 Christian Higher Education Month. Uh, so she's left her mark in many places around the world. Jessica Schaefer graduated in 2002. And in 2007, she began working at the Kuchala Hospital, Molly's first Christian hospital with a primary focus in nursing and education and anesthesia. She was named nursing director in 2010, overseeing a nursing department that has grown to over 100 nurses and nurses' aides. And uh, as you can see there, they have treated a significant number of patients delivered a, a significant number of babies and performed many surgeries. And those numbers just continue to climb. And she has now turned the training portion of the nursing uh, program over to a national to carry it forward. Jim Rudd earned a degree in Bible and pastoral ministry, where he caught a passion for urban ministry. In 2006, he was ordained by the Christian Missionary Alliance and in April 2008, he and his wife Kendra felt God call them to his work in Philadelphia. And in 2009, he planted a successful church, True Vine Church community, and is working on his second inner city church plant. So he encourages people to come as they are and seek a life-changing experience with Jesus. True Vine's philosophy is simple. Bless Philadelphia. Not bad, huh? 
Uh, keep it simple. Services they provide include a food pantry, caring for our neighbors, helping the needy, and other practical expressions of God's love. Holly Nichols graduated in 2006, and in 2009, she moved to Asia to work with a team that was focused in church planting among unreached people groups in a closed access country or limited access country. Her major focus has been teaching on prayer and intercession and facilitating a prayer house. She has a long-term call to Asia, along with a global perspective to see every tribe, nation, and tongue be reached, but mostly she desires to see the kingdom of God advance in any way possible. She is currently residing in Redding, California, and attends the School of Supernatural Ministry at Bethel Church. A.R. Bernard is the founder, senior pastor, and CEO of Christian Cultural Center, located in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, Christian Cultural Center is a ministry and not-for-profit 501c3 organization that currently has over 33,000 members and sits on an 11.5 acre, 45,000 square meters campus. <clears throat> he served as the former president of the Council of Churches of the City of New York, representing 1.5 million Protestants, Anglicans, and Orthodox Christians. Uh, he graduated with his uh, doctoral degree from ATS. Zach Train graduated in 2010, turned his passion for surfing and degree in intercultural studies into a full-time ministry. During his time on staff with Surfing the Nations in Hawaii, he focused on serving the homeless and providing opportunities to at-risk youth. As many as 4,000 are fed weekly and young people from homeless families and community youth considered at risk are taught to swim and surf, and in the process receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Zach's primary goal is to go to serve the people of Bangladesh and develop the surf culture by providing the education and tools needed for the locals to produce and maintain their own boards. So you can see the kind of people that have come through NIAC and what they've gone on and to do with it. Some of them have made good money and have done major business and others have gone on to serve society in other ways, but all of them have focused on continuing the legacy of Nyack College. Chelsea Geyer, in 2012, she graduated from Nyack and uh, as an honors program alumni, alumna, Chelsea is the founder of her own nonprofit, DC 127, located in Washington, DC. And, uh, Named for its location and the scriptural exhortation to look after orphans and widows in their distress, James 127. The group coordinates the efforts of churches and local foster care agencies to support foster children and their families. She learned about foster care firsthand at, age, at a young age as three of her siblings joined her family through foster care and adoption. She is a prime example of the fruit born at Nyack College one of some 32,000 alumni, alumni who serve in the U.S. and around the world. So there you go. Do you want to join in the legacy of Nyack College, make a difference in the world, uh, change uh, situations, and allow people to be changed for good? Uh, there are some of the alumni who have gone on to make a difference in the world. As you can see, Nyack College was not built by one man. How did the gifts of others contribute to the success of Nyack College? A.B. Simpson passed away in 1919, but his legacy of Nyack College continues today. And all those graduates that have come through, the 32, 33, 34,000 now uh, that have come through Nyack College and continue to fan out around the globe and make a difference, um, how about it? How about it? How did the gifts of other people help Nyack continue to develop and grow? When you look at your gifts and talents, what kind of people do you need around you to extend your ministry? That's maybe a question you need to think about. Um, Lone Rangers, most of these people that we've talked about today did not uh, have the impact they did by being Lone Rangers. Uh, they gathered other people around them to make a difference. Good examples. Take it in. Think about it. Hope that's helpful. Thank you.